Greetings and attention. We're about to start the webinar, so please be seated and make yourself comfortable. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Professor Hardin Shah, Master of Science, as the President of Federation Asian Nutrition Societies. Honorable Professor Dr. Ram Huising, International College of Nutrition, Poland. Honorable Mr. Yogata Masindia, PhD, as Manager of Nutrition Science, Benio Institute. Honorable Ms. Goh Pin Ern, Master of Science, Manager of Nutrition Communication, Asia Pacific, Benio Institute. Honorable Professor Dr. Anati Viti Tamyo as the President of Food Science and Technology Association of Thailand. Honorable Professor Dr. Ahmad Sulaiman, Secretary General of Food and Nutrition Society of Indonesia. And last but not least, all participants of today's webinar series. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to the second International Symposium on Food and Nutrition. My name is Melissa Stefani Kachito, as a fourth year nutrition student of Universitas Gajah Mada, and I'm very honored to accompany you here as the master of ceremony of today's webinar series. The second International Symposium of Food and Nutrition is organized by the Food and Nutrition Society of Indonesia as an adhering body of Federation of Asian Nutrition Societies and International Union of Nutritional Sciences under the theme Updates on Food, Nutrition, and Probiotic Sciences, Implications for Better Programs and Product Development. This symposium is organized by the Food and Nutrition Society of Indonesia under the auspices of Southeast Asia Probiotics Scientific and Regulatory Network, Southeast Asia Public Health Nutrition Network, Federation of Asian Nutrition Societies, and International Union of Nutritional Sciences. Please be noted that this webinar series will be organized every Friday from 2.30 until 4 p.m. of Jakarta time, from the 7th of August until the 4th of December 2020. And it is expected to broaden our knowledge and deepen our understanding of nutrition problems and solutions, especially in Asia. This week, we will discuss the immune health benefits of diets, prebiotics, and food ingredients. And next week, we will discuss the health benefits of protein and soy with foods and beverages. So stay tuned. Now, before we start the program, let us hear the opening remarks of the President of Federation of Asian Nutrition Societies, Professor Hardin Shah. The floor is all yours. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Good day. Uh, thank you very much for your coming. I would like uh, to say thank you to all of you, especially our honorable speaker uh, today, uh, Prof. Dr. Ram B. Singh from International College of Nutrition, Poland, and to Ms. Gopen Ern, MEC, as a manager nutrition communication, Asia Pacific uh, Borneo Institute. Also to Prof. Dr. Anadi as the President of Food Science and Technology of Thailand. Uh, we would like also to thanks to a beautiful uh, Master of Ceremony today. She is Melissa, as uh, just uh, graduated from Nutrition Study Program of Gajamada University, Yogyakarta, one of the beautiful city in the part of uh, a middle part of the Java Island. And also thank you to Prof. Ahmad as uh, Secretary General at the Federation Asian Nutrition Societies, my Secretary at Advance, and also Secretary General at the Food Nutrition Society of Indonesia and Professor of the IPB University. Uh, for today, we will have a special topic uh, previously, we discussed about the role of the probiotic. Now, today, we discuss about the role of prebiotic. There is also a special component on the prebiotic that we would like uh, will present by uh, Ms. Gopern. And before that, we would like also to discuss uh, there is a, a new literature and publication about the Indo Mediterranean diet. Previously, we know exactly about the health benefit of the Mediterranean diet. Now, with the adding word Indo-Mediterranean diet, 
would like to explore more today. Thank you very much, Prof. Dr. Ramji Singh. During the pandemic, as far away from Indonesia, in Poland, but he will be available with us in the few minutes. He is already in in the Zoom now. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, hello, Prof. Uh, Dr. Ram. Uh, Miss Go Pin Earn, Prof. Anadi will soon uh, join us. Uh, I just got the uh, WhatsApp from from her. And uh, I would like to share to you that the uh, information from the host, from the registration uh, desk, that today we are happy that the number of the countries participant increased, previously uh, 12 countries participant, now 15 countries participant, 15, one, five. Thank you very much participant from Australia, Germany, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Pakistan, Singapore, New Zealand, Thailand, Tonga, well, this is from uh, Pacific Island, Emirates, United States, and Vietnam, Polandia, and Sweden. Thank you very much for all the participants. And as the previous participant, also mainly from the Indonesian participant, what we are happy, the number of the country participants now uh, increase. Uh, I would like to inform you that the view from the uh, registrant participant when we are asking about uh, do you think the high sugar intake uh, will potentially uh, increase uh, inflammation and about nearly 85% of the participant uh, said yes. So it is quite relevant to the uh, current uh, literature. When we are asking uh, we were uh, asking about the uh, do diet rich in uh, polyphenol and also flavonoid and antioxidant had potential uh, immune modulating action and about 98%, nearly 100% said yes in the uh, registration uh, questionnaire. And when we asked about uh, when we mentioned about the definition of the abiotics from codex, exactly we quote we, uh, from the codex uh, definition and 99% said yes. So it seems that the participant uh, today, uh, according to the degree, about 75% of the participant with a whole magister and PhD degree, uh, the rest is about 25%. Uh, bachelor degree and uh, status as a student. And when I am actually, we were asking about the institutional background, uh, the government sector is 40%, private sector about 50%, the rest is the uh, uh, academic. So some magister degree, PhD degree from government and uh, private sector also attended this uh, uh, webinar. And when we are asking about, do you know that the Chikori uh, root uh, fibers uh, potentially improve uh, body immunity? Also, about 95% said yes, even uh, they haven't uh, listened to presentation by Bonio Institute today. So thank you very much. Enjoy the webinar today. And I would like to invite you also for the next Friday. There is a special design topics also for the Friday. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you very much, Professor Hatim Shah, for the wonderful remarks. Now we are moving to the most awaited part of the webinar. It's time for the presentation from today's well-known speakers that will be led by the moderator. So now I would like to introduce the moderator for today, Professor Dr. Ahmad Sulaiman. Professor Ahmad, who earned his PhD in Human Nutrition in University of Nebraska, Lincoln, specializes in food safety and nutrition at Bogor Agricultural University. And currently, Professor Ahmad is the Secretary General of Federation of Asian Nutrition Societies. Professor Ahmad, time is yours. Thank you, Melissa. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
Good afternoon for participants from Indonesia and the neighboring countries, and good morning for participants from the western part of the globe. Welcome on the seventh plenary of the second international symposium on food and nutrition, or ISPAN. I am Ahmad Sulaiman from IPB University, and uh, before the MC informed that I am also the Secretary General of the Federation of Asian Nutrition Societies, or PANS, and I will be chairing for this plenary session. Today's theme of this seventh plenary is Immune Health Benefits of Diet, Prebiotics and Food Ingredients. I think this theme is very important in regard to pandemic COVID-19, where most of people in the world rely on the immune system and try to consume foods that may boost the immune function to combat and protect from COVID-19. We are very lucky now, since we have four speakers who are very knowledgeable to talk about this. The first we have Professor Dr. Rambi Singh from International College of Nutrition, Poland. Good morning, Professor Singh. The second is Dr. Yogatama Chindia Jenser, Manager Nutrition Science at Benio Institute, uh, Germany. Good morning, Dr. Yoga. The third speaker is Ms. Goh Pien Eun, Master of Science, Manager Nutrition Communication, Asia Pacific, from Benio Institute in Singapore. Good afternoon, Ms. Goh. And the fourth speaker is Professor Dr. Anadi Niti Tamyong. She is the President of Food Science and Technology Association, Thailand. And she will join us later at about uh, 3 p.m. So now I think we move to uh, Ms. Uh, Goh, and you will speak about uh, uh, strengthening our body's inner defense with prebiotic kikori root fibers, special nutrients yes. for our gut microbes. Please, yes, that's uh, right. Your time is uh, about 20 minutes, 21 minutes with Dr. Yoga. Please. Okay. So, all right. So, I hope everyone can see my slides. So, a very good afternoon to everyone and salamat siang to all our Indonesian friends. So, I'm from Benio Institute and I'd like to share with you how we can strengthen our body's inner defense with prebiotic chicken root fibers. So, prebiotics are special nutrients for the gut microbes. So first of all, I'd like to introduce a little bit of my, about myself and where I'm from. So I'm from the Benio Institute, and um, there are three departments at the Benio Institute. We've got nutrition science. Um, uh, our colleagues from nutrition science, they do the studies together with scientists from all over the world. And the second department, we've got nutrition communication. Well, that's my department. So in this department, we share about the science. You know, the science is so exciting. It's just so much stuff to share with you guys. Okay, and the third department is regulatory affairs. So our colleagues from regulatory affairs, they deal with the food legislation. For example, they um, talk with the people from BPOM or the FDA from other countries. And now we are a science-based organization. So we participate in many scientific conferences all over the world. Uh, even uh, this one, uh, ISFAN, and also uh, last year in uh, Asia Co Congress of Nutrition and also the Asia Pacific uh, uh, Conference on Clinical Nutrition as well, and also other conferences in Europe and the US. So last, uh, so sometime this week, I also took part in this uh, ILSI conference on sugar reduction. Okay. And um, these are two websites, websites that we created. On the left is about prebiotic chicory root fibers. So actually this uh, prebiotic chicory root fibers is a very special um, ingredient. Um, it's obtained from the uh, chicory plant, just using hot water process only. And this plant, this chicory plant is also very pretty. You see on the right hand side, you see a little flower there, a blue flower. So if you allow it time to grow, it'll grow into a blue flower. And on the right hand side, you see a website uh, called palatinos.org. So we also have this uh, really good quality ingredient. It's a, a slow release uh, carbohydrate ingredient. It's low GI and also really good for our metabolic health. Um, but today I'll focus on prebiotic chicory root fibers. So I encourage everyone to check out our websites. Okay, so over here is an overview of what I would like to share today. I'm gonna to share about gut and gut microbes and how they influence our immunity. And where does it start? Okay, the prebiotic 
fact, starts in the large intestine, okay? I'm going to focus more on this area as well. And how can we um, uh, improve or selectively get more um, good gut microbes? That's where prebiotic chicory root fibers come in. And today I'm going to share with, the, share with you the science and how uh, this special ingredient can also help to strengthen our bodies in the defense. And uh, last but not least, I'm going to show you the link between blood sugar levels, uh, blood sugar and also immunity. Sometimes I'll say blood sugar, sometimes I'll say glu blood glucose. These are the same thing. Just one is consumer friendly, one is more scientific term. Okay, this is my favorite part, okay? How our gut and gut microbes influence our immunity. So the importance of our gut microbes and the gut microbiota have already been addressed in scientific um, um, activities and also organizations all over the world. So here we've got um, from ISAP, ISAPP, it stands for International Scientific uh, for Prebiotics and Probiotics. So ISAP scientists also uh, clearly acknowledge that um, prebiotics and probiotics, they are no-brainers when it comes to supporting our immunity. So prebiotics are special nutrients for the good microbes and probiotics, these are the good microbes. So the same thing has been rolled out in other countries such as the United Kingdom and also in Malaysia, where they recommend gut-friendly foods for our gut health. And that makes a lot of sense because, um, you know, our gut is a center of immunity. More than 70% of our immune cells are located in our gut alone. And even in China, they've also published a handbook of COVID-19 prevention and treatment. And over here, they also talk a little bit about the balance of the gut microbes and nutritional support. And um, in chi uh, China, uh, scientists have also published this paper by Gao et al, uh, 2020, just this year only. And in that paper, it says that the Chinese government and first-line medical staff also accept the importance of the role of the gut microbes in this COVID-19 prevention uh, infection. Okay, so I've talked about the gut and the gut microbes. I'm gonna share with you a little bit more about what our gut does, okay? So give you a bit more of a um, um, scientific background of our, the function of, of our gut. So a long time ago, people used to think that our gut has got very basic function is to digest food, is to make stools, and then to excrete stools. Just these three functions alone. Um, but today, we know that our gut actually has more functions than that. You see, our gut is a very special organ. It produces hormones. It's also our second brain. Okay, our first brain is up here, our brain together with the spinal cord. The second brain is actually our gut. The scientific name is called the nervous system. Okay, nervous has nothing to do with being nervous, okay? This is a scientific name. And the important thing about our gut is this uh, three red bubbles that I'd like to share. Okay, the first thing is our gut is a barrier, a barrier between the inside world, which is our body, and the outside world. What's the outside world? So the outside world will be the environmental factors, the food and the drinks that we put into our body, our inside world. Our gut is a very specialized barrier. It helps us to absorb nutrients and at the same time also helps to prevent these uh, bad bacteria, bad microbes and their endotoxins from coming into our body and harming us. And like what I mentioned earlier, our gut is a major center of the immune system. More than 70% of our cells, the immune cells are located just in our gut alone. And you know, we've got microbes living on us and also in us. 90% of these microbes in on, on our body, it's actually located in our gut. And most of these gut microbes are located in the large intestine. You know, we've got hundreds of trillions of these uh, gut microbes in the large intestine. And according to scientific literature, uh, these gut microbes can weigh uh, as much as a few hundred grams, up to two kilos. And our scientific literature also says that these gut microbes are actually our forgotten organ. They're really important for our health, overall health, and um, good gut microbes and their activities, such as metabolites, such as short-chain fatty acids, they interact with our immune system. They help to regulate our immune system and also they interact with the rest of our body. So that's super important, okay, for our health. And of course, we want more good gut microbes, right? Instead of bad gut microbes. So how do we have more good gut microbes? Easy. We just give a good gut microbes their favorite food. What's their favorite food? Prebiotics. And chicory root fibers, these are scientifically proven prebiotics. They help to selectively promote more good microbes, more good gut microbes. Okay, 
So I'm going to talk about the importance of gut microbes here. You know, when we take uh, these uh, special nutrients, uh, prebiotic chicory root fibers, the favorite food of the good gut microbes, what happens? Of course, we, have a, uh, we can help to strengthen and support our inner defense system, which is our immunity. There are also other benefits when we take these prebiotic chicory root fibers. It helps our gut health, our digestive health, so that we have uh, regular bowels, you know, we don't have constipation at all. It feels great. Okay. And um, people also have digestive feelings, um, uh, well, uh, feelings of digestive wellness as well. And um, chicory root fibers can also help in the area of blood sugar management, in bone health. So calcium is reaching into the bones and also help in the area of weight management. For example, we eat fewer calories and more. There's so many benefits. So all these benefits are proven by human studies. So over here, I just want to show you some potential ways of how prebiotics can help to support our inner defense. So first of all, um, prebiotics can help us in our barrier function improvement, gut barrier in improvement. So when you take prebiotics, it helps us to get a nice, thick and juicy gut, okay, not a skinny gut. We want a thick and juicy gut so that it forms a good and strong barrier. And the other thing about prebiotics is it helps to reduce uh, infections as well. How? But the prebiotic effect is selectively increase the good gut microbes. So we have more good gut microbes protecting us, okay, our bodyguards, as compared to the bad gut microbes, so that these uh, bad gut microbes they don't get too comfortable in our body. And prebiotics can also help in the area of um, reducing the negative effects of antibiotics. You know, the other name of antibiotics is actually called antibacterial medication. So antibacterial or antibiotic medication, um, they help to um, uh, kill the bad bacteria that's making us sick. But one of the side effects of antibiotics is, at the same time, it also harms some, uh, harms some of the good bacteria in our gut. So with prebiotics, we get uh, reduced negative effects of antibiotic medication. And prebiotics can also help us in the area of uh, reduced inflammation. So uh, we, we see this, uh, the evidence in, in the area of uh, overweight and obesity. These um, conditions actually increase inflammation. So with prebiotics, it helps to reduce inflammation. And also in other areas such as inflammatory bowel diseases and also things like uh, fatty liver. And we also see evidence of our prebiotics in the area of allergy reduction. Okay, I've talked about prebiotics this, prebiotics that. What is a prebiotic? There is a definition. So over here, this is a definition, the scientific definition of prebiotics. Um, this prebiotics definition is uh, done by the ICEP, uh, the International Scientific Association for Prebiotics and Probiotics. So ICEP is an independent uh, nonprofit organization it consists of uh, uh, independent international scientists in, in the area of uh, prebiotics and probiotics. So they got together and then they came uh, based on their experiences and based on the research uh, literature out there, this was the, um, uh, the latest scientific uh, definition of prebiotics. So according to the ICEP, a prebiotic is a substance that is selectively used by the host microorganism uh, by the way, host is us, okay? We are the host. Plus, con conferring to a health benefit. And this health benefit, it must be proven in human studies. Um, so if the host is a human, the health benefit must be proven in uh, human studies. If the host is, let's say you're selling uh, pet food, okay, the health benefit must be proven in the pet. So this paper is about 10 pages long, uh, but if there's no time to read, you can check out this video on the right-hand side. It's two minutes long. So because of this really strict criteria for prebiotics, not everything's a prebiotic. Uh, recently, Professor Bob Russell, he's also one of the prebiotic experts from ISEP. He's from the University of Reading, uh, UK as well. So he gave this uh, presentation last year in the Asia Pacific Conference on uh, Clinical Nutrition in China. And he did this, he did this evaluation of uh, prebiotics as well as potential prebiotics. And this was what he found. So chicory, inulin, and FOS, or also called oligofructose, together with gauze, these are scientifically proven prebiotics. The science, uh, the body of the evidence, the strength of the, of the evidence is really good, very strong. So he gave them a green light, okay? And everything else, um, they, they are considered to be candidate prebiotics. Why candidate? Because the science, um, the body of the evidence, the strength of the evidence is not so strong not so strong to be considered to be a scientifically proven prebiotic. 
So what's the difference between elin, uh, chicory inulin and FOS and gauze? So chicory root fibers uh, versus gauze. What's the difference? Okay, chicory root fibers, they are plant-based prebiotics. Gauze, um, gauze is synthesized from the milk sugar called lactose. So chicory root fibers are plant-based, gauze is um, uh, milk-based. So the strong body of evidence for prebiotic chicory root fibers, um, there's a very strong evidence uh, for around prebiotic chicory root fibers. So there's a selective fermentation of these uh, special nutrients, these prebiotics, by the be beneficial uh, bacteria in our gut called bifidobacteria. Why bifidobacteria? Actually, bifidobacteria is one of the most famous um, good gut microbe and also the most well studied. So actually, there are more than 40 studies in humans and also more than 15 studies in infants and children showing a selective increase of this good bacteria called bifidobacteria when people eat uh, prebiotic chicory root fibers. So um, this uh, evidence is very strong and consistent. No matter what, uh, what race the person is, what ethnic group, what age, what gender, and also the food matrix and so on and so forth. So in human studies, we find that we, uh, we, we find that five grams per day of chicory root fibers per day, okay, not per intake, per day increases bifidobacteria already and significantly. So over here, you see a, um, the history of the prebiotic research. So back in 1995, that's about 25 years ago, the prebiotic concept was born. So it was, um, this landmark paper was published by Professor um, uh, Glenn Gibson and also Professor uh, Robert Freud. So Professor Glenn Gibson, uh, that's the first person's uh, photo you saw just now, uh, the one from ISAP. Okay, so uh, that's Professor together with um, Professor Robert Freud. They published this landmark paper. They did a study on prebiotic. So 1995 was when the word prebiotic was first um, uh, discovered, okay, uh, was first published. And in this paper, uh, the professors found that chicory root fibers together with gauze, these are scientifically proven prebiotics. Fast forward to today, okay, more than 20 years later, the science still shows that chicory root fibers together with gauze, these are still scientifically proven prebiotics and everything else are still candidate prebiotics. And Benio has been supporting this prebiotics and gut microbiota research for more than 20 years already. And even to today, 2020, we're still doing these, uh, this research, prebiotics and gut microbes. It's very exciting research. Uh, actually, there's so many things to discover. You know, according to scientists, even though prebiotic research has been ongoing for 25 years, it's actually considered to be in its infancy, okay? Still a baby. So we see there's so many things to discover about prebiotics and gut microbes. And today, of course, I'm going to share with you some information. Yeah. And um, over here, I'm going to share with you um, how this uh, Orafti brand of uh, prebiotic chicory root fibers can help to support our immune system. Okay, so Orafti is a uh, brand of chicory root fibers that uh, Benio um, has. Okay, so we also do a lot of research together with scientists from all over the world. So these are some of the key highlights, okay, that I want to share with you today. So these prebiotic chicory root fibers can help to strengthen the inner defense in children, their immune system, so that they don't get sick so often. And it can also help to reduce the negative effects of antibiotics. Remember the antibacterial medication? Yep, I'm going to show you the studies later on. And prebiotics can also help to strengthen our gut barrier and nourish it. So we get a nice, thick and juicy, good, strong gut barrier. So prebiotic chicory root fibers also help in autoimmune disorders. For example, um, in type 1 diabetes or inflammatory bowel diseases. So autoimmune disorder means that the immune system mistakenly uh, attacks our body. I'm going to share a little bit more um, in the next few slides. Okay, and I'll explain a bit more. Okay, and chicory root fibers have also been shown to reduce infections of pathogens or bad bacteria, uh, for example, in the area of traveler's diarrhea or um, food poisoning, and also reduce inflammation um, in fatty liver, overweight obesity, osteoarthritis, and so on and so forth, and also greater antibody response during flu vaccination. So this flu, uh, we're talking, uh, it's not about the COVID flu. So this study was published uh, before um, anyone heard of COVID virus or the COVID flu. So over here in this, uh, um, um, the pictures you see at the bottom, these are screenshots of the scientific papers, um, the key scientific papers uh, that have been published on this area. So I'm going to show you the studies. Okay. 
um, over here is a uh, one of the latest studies on chicory root fibers showing a selective increase in uh, good bacteria in the gut. This study was published by Professor Reis and also Professor Verbica from Belgium, and they used next, uh, DNA next generation sequencing technique. So why do we use this? Yes, it's the latest, it's, uh, it's the most up-to-date, it's, it's the latest uh, technique. But why this and why not other methods? Well, because if we use other traditional methods, it cannot detect changes in the gut microbes. Not all gut microbes can be cultured. You know, on the traditional uh, agar plate, some of you may have done that uh, in school before. So gut microbes, not everything can be, um, can be grown on these uh, agar plates. So that's why you must use this DNA next generation technique to detect changes in the gut microbes. So over here, this is the, um, the, stud, uh, the results of what happened when people took either chicory root fibers uh, or placebo maltodextrin. So maltodextrin is like a starch. It is not a prebiotic and neither it is, is it a fiber. So we compared the two. So uh, what happened? Okay, so with prebiotic chicory root fibers, uh, the people who ate this uh, special ingredient, they had more good bacteria, bifidobacteria, as well as anaerostites. And we see a lower um, uh, uh, numbers of bilophila, which is a bad bacteria. So on the right-hand side, you see a snapshot of the results. Okay, let me um, show you how to read them, okay? So P stands for placebo, I stands for chicory inulin or chicory root fibers. So with chicory root fiber group, we can see more good bacteria, bifidobacteria. The blue box, the dark blue box is taller than the light blue box. And um, when people ate this chicory root fibers, we see an uh, increase in n aerostypes, also good bacteria. You see the dark green box is taller than the light green box. And in the chicory root fiber group, we also see lower uh, bilophila. We see the dark orange box. That means people who eat these uh, chicory root fibers, it is lower as compared to the light uh, orange box. Okay, yeah. So this is another study I want to show you. It's done in children. So these children were given prebiotic chicory root fibers. Okay, and this study was done during uh, the winter season. Uh, it was done in Hungary. So Hungary is a very cold place, definitely much colder than Singapore, where I'm from, and also Indonesia or Southeast Asia. So Hungary has got uh, four seasons and um, the winter season is super cold. I've only been there once in my life. I've been there in spring and it was super cold already. I can't imagine what it's like in winter. Okay, so this uh, prebiotic chicory root fibers was given to these children during the winter season. Why? Okay, let me tell you why? Okay, so the winter season is when um, people and also children get sick more often. So that is the best time to try out this prebiotic chicory root fibers, right, in the area of uh, immunity. So children are given either prebiotic chicory root fibers or the placebo maltodextrin. Let's take a look at what happened. In terms of the gut microbes, they had significantly higher levels of the good gut microbes called bifidobacteria and lactobacillus. In terms of the immune system or in the defense, these children who took chicory root fibers had significantly fewer infections with fever and sinusitis. So anything ending with itis means infection. Sinusitis means sinus infection. And a plus point is these children who took chicory root fibers, they had better stool consistency, so better uh, digestive health. So when they went to the toilet, it was all good. Okay, so within this group of, um, um, so uh, in the children who took chicory root fibers or uh, placebo, some of them fell sick. Of course, um, the children who took chicory root fibers, they fell sick less often as compared to the placebo group. Um, uh, so anyway, when the children fell sick, whether they're from the placebo group or the prebiotic chicory root fibers group, they went to see a doctor and doctor gave them antibiotic medication. Antibiotic means antibacterial. So what happened to the children's um, gut microbes? Okay, so let me share with you about the children who took the prebiotic chicory root fibers. So these children, when they were on the antibiotic medication, they had higher levels of bifidobacteria, even though they took antibiotic medication. So you see this prebiotic chicory root fibers help to maintain this high and stable level of bifidobacteria. Okay, this other study I wanna show you um, is done in children with type one diabetes. So type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disorder. It's discovered early on in life. So that's why it's a children's study. Once in a while, in a very rare case, type 1 diabetes is um, discovered in adults. 
So a very famous uh, adult with type 1 diabetes is actually uh, uh, Miss uh, Theresa May, who's a former prime minister for Britain. So anyway, this is about children, okay? The type 1 diabetes study in children. Okay, so what is type 1 diabetes? It's an autoimmune disorder where little or no insulin is produced. Why? Because the immune system mistakenly attacks the pancreas. The pancreas is an organ that produces insulin. And insulin is a hormone that helps to regulate the blood sugar levels. So for these children, they have to inject themselves with insulin so as to help regulate their blood sugar levels. And scientists found that there's a link to imbalanced gut microbes. And this is uh, again associated or linked with having a leaky gut. That means the gut is permeable permeable with things like um, bad bacteria or the endotoxins that the bacteria is producing. So this leaky gut has been shown to predate uh, or occur first uh, prior to the development of type 1 diabetes. So leaky gut occurs first, followed by the uh, diagnosis and development of type 1 diabetes. So in this study, uh, these type 1 uh, diabetic children were given either chicory root fibers or uh, placebo maltodextrin. Let's take a look what happened, okay? So in terms of gut microbes, again, we see a selective increase in the good gut microbes called bifidobacteria. And we also see higher levels of C-peptide. What is C-peptide? So C-peptide indicates that the pancreas is now producing insulin. Wow. From little to no insulin, now the pancreas is starting to produce some insulin. So it's really exciting, this study. And on top of that, the scientists also found that there's um, less leaky gut in these children who took prebiotic chicory root fibers. And a correlation analysis found that there's a link between the gut microbes and also leaky gut. So it's a really interesting study. Okay, I'll show you another. Um, so um, uh, I will jump on to the next topic. And this is about blood glucose management as well as a link between um, immunity. So we've seen that prebiotic chicory root fibers can help in the area of inner defense. Prebiotic chicory root fibers can also help in the area of blood glucose management. But how is blood glucose management and immune system linked? Let me show you. But before that, I want to uh, share with everyone that a lower blood glucose response and lower blood sugar levels is actually much better for all of us, no matter what age group and no matter what uh, health status you are. Here are some reasons why, okay? Um, unfortunately, during this time, um, scientists, uh, healthcare professionals, and every one of us, we actually discovered that uh, diabetes weakens the body's ability to fight this coronavirus. So um, studies have been published as well um, um, in, in scientific papers, and also from American Heart Association, they also published this, um, this news uh, this year. And even the Singapore Straits Times News, they also published the same thing, that diabetes weakens the body's ability to fight this coronavirus. So that's why having healthy blood sugar levels is really important. Not just for diabetic people, but also for everyone, you and I. So these are two um, uh, articles published by the New York Times. Um, so on the left, it says how fast carbohydrates can undermine our health. Uh, fast carbohydrates actually trigger a fast and high blood sugar response. And when we always have high blood sugar levels, what happens? We get a higher risk of getting diseases like diabetes and heart disease as well. And on the right-hand side is another New York Times article that was published also uh, this year. And it shows that high blood sugar levels uh, can decrease your exercise benefits. So this New York Times article was based on a scientific paper that was published recently by McDonald. Uh, McDonald here is the name of the scientist. It's not the fast food restaurant. Okay, so over here you see healthy blood sugar levels is important for everyone, okay, no matter what health stage or no matter um, whether you're healthy, not so healthy, and no matter uh, whatever age. Okay, so with prebiotic sugar root fibers, it can help in the area of healthier blood sugar management. How? You see, uh, chicken root fibers, they are not digestible in our, by the uh, small intestine, so it doesn't increase our blood sugar levels at all. Okay, so in these uh, nine human uh, studies, in normal people, in uh, overweight people, uh, it shows that the more sugar root fibers is used to replace sugars, the lower the blood glucose response. And already 20% sugar replacement shows a significant effect. So all these studies are very consistent. They show a, a reduced blood sugar response with sugar root fibers. And on the right, you see a graph. You see some green and some red dots. Okay, so green dots represent um, the oligofructose. Oligofructose means uh, shorter chain sugar root fibers. And red dots, it represent um, data from inulin. 
inulin is the longer chain chicory root fibers. So whether short chain or long chain chicory root fibers, these are all chicory root fibers and these are all prebiotics as well. And they can also help in the area of blood sugar management. Actually, another way, um, another mechanism that uh, chicory root fibers can help in our blood sugar management is via the prebiotic effect. How? Okay, so first of all, these prebiotics are uh, selectively used by the good gut microbes, um, particularly bifidobacteria. And these good gut microbes, they produce um, short chain fatty acids, these metabolites. Short chain fatty acids are actually really good for our health, okay? And um, these short chain fatty acids also trigger the release of this hormone called GLP-1 hormone. It's a, good, it's a gut hormone. And this gut hormone in, uh, in turn triggers insulin release. So insulin is a hormone that helps to regulate our blood sugar levels. So you see this prebiotic chicory root fibers is, uh, is pretty cool, right? In helping you with inner defense as well as blood sugar management. Okay, and um, the science of the evidence around chicory root fibers in reduced blood glucose uh, response is really strong. So we have a positive um, uh, EFSA or EFSA scientific opinion. So EFSA stands for European Food Safety Authority. It's one of the world's toughest regulatory bodies, okay? So it's not easy to get a scientific opinion from them. So we have this positive scientific opinion from them, plus we also have a um, health claim uh, for reduced blood glucose response with sugar fibers when it's used to replace sugars, and it's from the European Commission. So in the European Union or European countries, you can actually use this claim. Okay, and with that, that's my, um, this is my thank you slide. So thank you very much for your time, and terima kasih for our, also for our Indonesian, Indonesian friends. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pin for your very interesting and very comprehensive presentation. Uh, I think this is uh, something new for most of us that chicory root is a good nutrient for our gut microbes. And I know many participants are not patients to raise a patient on your talk, but please wait and just write your question in the chat room so we can select to deliver it to the speaker at Q&A session. And now I would like to check uh, Professor uh, Ram Singh. Are you okay now? Ready for your presentation? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very sorry that I have not been able to communicate with you due to my ignorance in this in this computer technology. <laughs> May I have the next slide, please? Uh, you would know that uh, we are in the pandemic and the complications and mortality are significantly higher among subjects with the elderly age and comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, heart attack, and obesity. Next slide, please. Next one, yeah. So we have to understand that if our immunological status is uh, substantially good, then we are less likely to develop the disease and other problems. So what are the pathways by which immunity could be uh, manipulated. Environmental risk factors such as the urbanization, globalization, influence the infections, mental stress, Western diet, tobacco, alcohol, they all can uh, influence various uh, biological factors in our body which can in influence adaptation, uh, adaptable immunity as well as the innate immunity and this can result into uh, increase oxidative stress and inflammation resulting into various diseases and various complications of viral infection such as the COVID-19. Next one. Now this is a summary how once the viral infection occurs it goes into the lung. Yeah in this slide this slide shows how the infection with coronavirus enter uh, when it enters the lung and how it progresses. So after enter, entering the lung tissue, it uh, acts like an antigen 
and then it goes on say, increasing and resulting into marked inflammation and decrease in the immunity. Can I have the next slide, please? Yes. yes. So the high, uh, the coronavirus infection is more common in patients with the uh, comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, and uh, those who are consuming increased amount of Western type of diet and lower amount of uh, fruits, vegetables, legumes that are rich in fiber uh, and uh, also QFA, antioxidant flavonoids and polyphenols. Next one, please. Okay. Next one. Yes. Now this slide shows the risk factors that can decrease immunity such as the smoking, alcoholism, pollutants, mental stress, sleep, and viral infections. And all these factors have a reference. Next, Next one. And uh, this slide shows that how protective factors can provide protection uh, and influence various biomolecules in the body. The environmental factors can damage the GMP and the vaccination in, can enhance the, uh, the hematopoietic stem cells and thus they can improve the trans transcriptomic, epigenomic, uh, metabolomic and reprogramming whereas the western type of food and damage all of them and decrease the immunity. Next please. Next. Yes. Now this is a very important slide because it shows the effect of various dietary factors on lipometabolism and immune cell lipid metabolism. And if there is a Western type of diet, this uh, would damage and would cause more inflammation and oxidized LDL. Uh, whereas if it is an, a, a nomaterian diet, it would enhance anti-inflammatory molecules and resulting into decrease in inflammation. But the Western diet would cause risk factor progression, more infection, decrease in autoimmunity, resulting into complications and uh, severity, uh, severe form of diseases and uh, mortality. Next slide, please. Next one. So what is the mechanism? Western diet triggers innate immunity and uh, Nord-like receptors, IFN signaling pathways, the Western diet induces long-lasting trained immunity in myeloid cells and uh, LPS respond to cyclic uh, GMP and also these stem cells. The long-term uh, acute overactivation of the innate immune system can provide trained immunity has been recently hypothesized to sync between non-dissolving vascular inflammation such as atherosclerosis and thrombosis and tissue damage leading to fibrosis and pneumonia. Next one. Next slide, please. So the Western diet is high in refined carbohydrates. Singh, Dr. Singh, I couldn't hear. Is there any problem again? Yes. Oh, so, okay. excessive Please. consumption of such foods can cause induced lipotoxic state, activate the innate immune system via TLR expressed on macrophage, dendrite cells, and neutrophils. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, this trigger activation of the canonical inflammatory signaling pathways that produce inflammatory mediators and other effectors and immune system. This is especially relevant to COVID-19 patients given the high rate of infection among lung alveolar epithelial cells and the involvement of lung tissue inflammation. Next one. Next one. So, next slide. Uh, can you listen my voice? Yes, yes. Okay. 
then I would take uh, slides from here and uh, uh, speak to you. So uh, high fat diet fed mice experiment showed that the T cell deficits were uh, uh, observed with high fat diet, T cells are responsible for providing immunity. Therefore, consumption of Western yeah, diet with high it. fat significantly impairs adaptive immunity with while ramping up innate immunity leading to chronic inflammation and severely impairing the immune system. Next. Uh, could you do that? No. Okay. So, in addition to innate immunity, Western diet consumption inhibits uh, T lymphocytes and B lymphocyte function in the adapted immune system. Specifically, high wire diet induces oxidative stress mm -hmm. and impairs the function of T and B cell proliferation and maturation and induces B cell apoptosis, which contributes to B cell immunosuppression. Moreover, T and B cells counts were also significantly lower in patients with severe COVID infection, that there could be potential interaction between Western diet consumption and COVID-19 on impairment of No sound. Sorry, it uh, disturbs um, maybe because of the weather. Yeah. A lot of disturbance, and yeah. uh, we are not able to communicate with uh, each other. Can you listen to me now? Yeah. Yeah. Good. 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 So, uh, it exerts beneficial effects for host defense against invading pathogens, but uncontrolled persistent innate immune activation causes chronic inflammation diseases, acute inflammatory reaction, predisposing to thrombosis and fibrosis, resulting into ARDS and later on increased mortality. And this slide shows the mechanism. This slide shows the mechanism, uh, how uh, you can't see, but uh, I can tell you that Western diet damages or triggers the innate immunity by stimulating nod-like receptors and IFN signaling pathways and it also alters LPS responses and GMPs and it induces long-lasting trained immunity in the myeloid cells. But there is a limit when there is a too much, too long consumption, then it uh, damages all the system and decreases the immunity. And this slide uh, shows how protective factors like the vaccine, BCG vaccine, how protective factors like BCG vaccine can uh, provide benefit uh, and increase the immunity. Various uh, factors are shown here, uh, which have I al uh, already enumerated, and how Indo-Mediterranean diet, moderate physical activity, yoga, meditation, and BCG would increase immunity is shown here, which you can't see, sorry. Then what is the mechanism of adverse and beneficial effects? These, the antigens may be, the antigens may be infection, pollutants, oxidants, leading to augmented immune responses. And uh, the, there may be protective antigens, such as the indo mediterranean type of food, which, may, which has been identified by not like receptors uh, in the body. Uh, which are all called NLRP3 to mediate trained immunity to evolve innate and adapted yeah, immune yeah. system and produce anti-inflammatory molecules. And these inflammatory molecules are lipoxins and oxylipins, which may inhibit thrombosis and atherosclerosis. And therefore, that is how immunity inhibits heart attack <coughs> and also pneumonias. Uh, 
the antigens as well as the Indo-Mediterranean type of foods can also influence epigenome. Epigenome is the surface of the gene and it is manifested by <coughs> histone modification, DNA methylation, modulation of messenger RNA and long non-coding RNA expression. <coughs> the protective factors are yoga, meditation, exercise, sleep and some of the herbs as well as moderate alcohol that can also provide protective factors as shown by some of the investigators and this slide shows <coughs> which you can't see how these factors enhance the community. Increased uh, physical activity and endometrial foods can improve the surface of the uh, DNA Professor Singh, your time is almost uh, finished. Maybe about, maybe about five minutes more. Yeah, kind of jealous of Dari Polandia. <laughs> yes, yeah, far away from Polandia. Yeah, please continue, Prof. Yeah, please continue. Okay. Please, Dr. Singh, we couldn't hear your voice. Corona, yeah, you can pass on next slide, please. Next one. Next slide. Next slide. Next one. Yeah, this slide shows the protective factors. Uh, omega-3 flavonoids, antiviral flavonoids, pufa, arachidonic acid, and omega-3 fatty acid. Next slide, please. Yes, and in the fish, you have not only fish uh, omega-3, but also fish peptides and selenium. They also okay. enhance immunity. Next okay. one. And this is study in 147 patients of corona compared to 150 non-corona in where corona test was negative. And we found that chronic disease, diabetes, hypertension were more common in the corona group compared to the other group. Next slide, please. And uh, we also found that uh, travel from corona infected area and also People of Jamaat, Tabdiki Jamaat, very many people from Indonesia came to India. Jamaat <laughs> public. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, Jamaat public. <laughs> yes, yes. And they would not listen us. They, said, they would say <laughs> that we don't be believe in asymptomatic corona. <laughs> when there are symptoms, I can isolate. But if there are no symptoms, we would not isolate. Something like that. So all these uh, uh, yeah, risk factors were more common among corona patients compared to the other group. Next slide, please. And this is clearly shown here that risk factors were more common in patients compared to the control group. Next slide, please. And uh, then uh, protective factors. Uh, okay. The endometrial type of foods, physical activity, and intake of herbs and nutraceuticals they were less common in corona group compared to the other group. Next slide, which is more clearly shown in this slide. Next one. Next. <clears throat> so what you should not do, critical to consider the impact of lifestyle habits on immunity. Refrain from tobacco, alcoholism, short sleep, aggression and anxiety, Western type of foods, no night awakening, night eating, Next one. <clears throat> and what to eat? Eat 150 gram per day of green leafy vegetables, fruits, citrus fruits, guava, grapes, papaya, muskmelon, uh -huh. berries, uh -huh. broccoli, dark grapes, uh -huh. then nuts, walnuts, almonds, 
millets whole grains indo mediterranean diet means more of whole grains grams peas beans porridge green uh, beans uh, black beans red beans they are all part of the along with millets of the indo mediterranean diet along with the spices fenugreek cumin turmeric coriander cinnamon <clears throat> so if these are there along with the mediterranean food perhaps the indo mediterranean diet becomes more potential and more powerful then oils uh, flax seed palm oil rosemary oil and of course we, uh, they, we can make a blend of oils to make a powerful oil which may have more nutrients they are also or balsam they are also very good in enhancing the community and the last slide then we have the last slide okay the last slide shows that endo mediterranean type of foods and last last a regular night sleep 7 to 8 hours okay moderate exercise half hour brisk walking and normal body weight should be maintained by eating balanced diet not by not eating japanese population they are not eat when they want to reduce their weight they start eating they stop eating rather that's wrong we should go for a balanced low caloric diet or alternate day fasting for decreasing the body weight <clears throat> yoga and meditation to manage mental stress of any kind and control diabetes blood pressure uh, hypertension and kidney functions no tobacco no alcoholism moderate alcohol mostly wines and <clears throat> have fasting on alternate days low energy diet can also has been found to enhance t lymphocytes in the body which is <laughs> a potential factor for improving increasing immunity and hence improvement and your power to fight the corona virus infection sorry very sorry for the inconvenience i hope you can listen me yeah thank you you can ask question i don't know when the yeah. computer or this uh, okay. system will be on. uh professor dr anadi niti damyong she is the president of food science and technology association of thailand She is going to talk about healthier food product innovation, reformulation, modernization, and personalization. Professor Anadi, you have 20 minutes for your presentation. Please, the time is yours. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you for inviting me to share my thoughts on healthier food product innovation. Uh, as uh, the host mentioned, I am currently the president of the full staff of Food Science and Technology Association of Thailand. So today, I would like to introduce to you some of the innovation that is going on and might help the consumers to attain more uh, healthy diets um, or more or healthier food products. So as everyone know, the, the scenery of food supply chain is changing. Right now, both fresh and processed foods play a vital role in the global food supply. This is uh, because of the increase in urbanization as well as the advancement of the logistic or uh, the food product distribution chain. At the same time, consumers have become more aware on their health nutrition and well-being. So this is the key reason why we are looking for healthier food products and the industry or the food manufacturer are now trying to uh, respond to the consumer's demand by providing the market with healthier choices. 
Another factor is the change in population structure worldwide. We are experiencing an aging population in many, many countries, uh, even in Southeast Asia, Thailand in particular, we are going to be an aged society uh, beginning next year. And we also have other factors that may play a role in the change uh, food supply chain scenery, like the change in consumer preference and regulatory atmosphere, the emerging of new marketing channels, especially under this uh, COVID situation, you've seen uh, a bloom of food delivery and also uh, food order in, on the internet, online food order. So this is a new or um, emerging channel of uh, food distribution that we are experiencing. And also last but not least, a lot of countries are also putting uh, an importance on the concerns on social and environmental issues as well as uh, sustainability in the long term. So uh, today I would like to talk to you about potential areas for innovation and modernization. Uh, these are a few ideas that uh, is being carried out in the food industry, namely food reformulation, production of specialty ingredients, production of food ingredients from alternative sources, some of the emerging processing technology and personalization of your food products or diet, which may become possible in the near future. As you can see, uh, the market is booming with healthy food products. So how can we make them healthy? Some of the innovation, like I mentioned, first of all, food reformulation or renovation. As you know, there are a few uh, undesirable component of the food, for example, like calorie, high calorie content, high sodium and high sugar. That is why the, uh, there are uh, technology or new innovation that can help to minimize these less desirable uh, components. For example, in terms of calorie content, there are a process for increasing digestion resistant starch in the uh, starch or polysaccharide uh, based product, such as using a technique to change the structure of the starch in the plant or suppressing the starch branching enzyme gene to produce amylose only granules, which can become, a, uh, can increase the content of resistant starch in the plant or in, in the starch source. Low fat fried food is also another example that I would like to show you. In, in This is the more of a um, industrial type uh, fryer, oilless frying uh, process, which use a uh, dynamic radiant frying. frying. This may look uh, a bit complicated because it's a, uh, like a, the process used in the industry, but in the household, especially in Thailand during the past, uh, lockdown period for COVID situation, we've seen a boom in the sales of uh, hot air fryers. People are looking for uh, more healthy fried food. So, uh, and there's a, a, a lot of, a great deal of increase in the purchase of hot air fryer during especially during the COVID uh, lockdown period because people stay at home and they want to experience cooking. They want to try making something at home. 
they want to eat fried food, but they want to make it healthier. Or some of the uh, process that are used right now in the industry, like vacuum frying, which makes frying uh, possible under low pressure and low temperature. Now, sugar replacement is another big issue that people are talking about. Uh, and, and there are a lot of non-calorie sweeteners being available for the food industry and as well as in the market, such as stevia, aspartame, and so on. For example, in, in Thailand right now, we've seen a growth, a, uh, an expanding growth in the formulation of sugar sweetened products, particularly sugar sweetened beverage. This is because of the manufacturer's attempt to respond to the health trend, and they also can apply for the front of pack healthy logo, uh, like you see at the bottom of the screen. This is the healthier choice logo for Thailand. And also, uh, Thailand has started to uh, have sugar tax for sweetened beverage for a, a few years now. So, uh, um, sugar replacement has also become uh, in, of interest for the industry. In terms of salt reduction, salt re replacement in, in the past, we re rely mainly on uh, other types of chloride salts that also give a salty taste, but not the same as sodium chloride, such as potassium chloride and lithium chloride, but th they may have some off flavor attached to, to them as well. So there's, um, with modern technology, it is possible to alter the, the sodium chloride crystal structure, such as uh, using the micro crystallization technique or other techniques to increase the solubility and the taste intensity of sodium chloride itself. So the manufacturer can use less sodium chloride in their product. Uh, that to in, in, in order to reformulate a product with lower sodium content. Let's look at some specialty ingredients for health benefit. There are a lot of uh, functional ingredients in terms of health benefit that are, are of interest right now in the market. And there are technology that can make them more active or more available for absorption in the body, such as uh, nanotechnology and as well as micro emulsion technique, which can make the substance so small that it can increase the absorption of that uh, particular compound. And the compound of interest are usually non-nutrient compounds or phytochemicals, such as uh, pro and prebiotics, omega-3 fatty acids, some bioactive peptides and other phytochemicals like carotenoids, flavonoids, as uh, some of the examples. These are some of the research that has already been commercialized. This is a production of curcumin nano emulsion that used the nano emulsion delivery system to increase the bio availability as well as the anti-inflammatory effects of curcumin. And this is the, at the, down below is the picture of the product that is already available in the market. And these are, this slide shows you that there are wide varieties of uh, ingredients that uh, have been Produce using nano emulsion or nano encapsulation technique, and they have been uh, added to a wide varieties of products as well. 
so some vitamin from some vitamins, some antioxidants, even uh, nutraceutical uh, compound, and even compound uh, uh, extracted from different kinds of uh, herbs and spices. This is a, another technology that is uh, become more useful, particularly in the aging society, which this is a, a specialty ingredient used for modifying the texture of food, used to formulate food with a modified texture. These are mostly hydrocolloids, such as santan gum, gelan gum, uh, gucomanan, carotenan, and so on. This is particularly helpful in formulating the product for the silver generation or for therapeutic products because uh, it helps to modify the texture of the food so that uh, it can the food or the beverage can be swallowed quite easily without uh, choking. Another technique that is used for texture modification is pureeing and reshaping. These are examples of foods served in nursing homes and elder care centers in Singapore. As you can see from the menu, this is like they have like carrots and other type of vegetables and the fish, I think, and this is spinach. They puree and then reshape it into uh, another form of uh, product, which is easily chewable and easily uh, to swallow, easy to swallow for the elderly. Now we look at uh, the alternative sources of food ingredients. Uh, I think no one can deny that uh, right now plant-based foods or plant-based protein is become of much interest in the worldwide market. You have seen the uh, plant-based meat analog uh, almost in almost every market right now in Thailand, it's starting to grow as well. This is because people are trying to divert from animal protein due to health awareness. Some is maybe because of the beliefs and religion and also uh, sustainability and environmental concern because our growing plants uh, give out less uh, carbon dioxide or, give, or give, give less carbon footprint than a racing animal. And these are uh, photo of some of the products. As you can see, there are a lot of uh, like burgers, sausages, and so on and so forth. And uh, 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 the plant-based milk is another category that is uh, growing widely uh, in all the markets as well. Another protein source of interest right now is uh, protein from insects like uh, cricket, mealworm, or caterpillar. In Thailand, we have uh, quite large cricket farms that supply uh, for ex exporters as well as uh, locally. These are some of the food products using uh, insect ingredients that you may see more and more in the future. Some innovative process has also been uh, uh, studied and made possible for production of some certain uh, compounds. For, like for example, these are bio factories for, product, for producing anthocyanin using plant cell culture. Now you can make anthocyanin extract in the lab using plant tissue culture as well as, um, sorry, I, I, I think I have uh, in the late, later on in another slide, growing meat in the cell, in the lab using cell culture. Another production or processing technique that is uh, of interest right now is how to make fresh but shelf-stable food. 
using non-thermal food processing technology, particularly the current interest is on high pressure processing. These are some of the products like the juices and uh, several types of meats that can be uh, produced using high pressure processing. And the product uh, can be kept at room temperature for a long shelf life, similar to uh, canned food, but that it tastes a lot fresher. Technology that will become more available in the future is 3D food printing technology. It, this is uh, quite interesting because you can uh, put uh, any comp uh, component into the mix and, uh, and then print it into the food, the form of food product. It, will also be quite useful in formulating food product for the elderly as well because of, uh, they will, you, we can, you can adjust the texture to whatever you want. And will be easily uh, chewable and uh, swallow. Uh, vertical farming is another interest is uh, in the control environment. You can grow your own crops of vegetables in a hydroponic or aeroponic system. And this is a culture meat that I mentioned earlier. You can, now you can grow your own meat in the lab. And it will become more available in the future as the technology advances. This is a, what they call cellular agriculture in action. Now with those uh, advanced uh, tech technology and, and the advancement in the uh, genetic, tech, uh, genetic knowledge as well, we are talking a lot about personalized nutrition or personalized diet. There are many forms from simply a dietary advice given by dietitian or nutritionist according to our own or uh, each individual's health examination results to a more sophisticate, sophisticated advice or sophisticated product tailor-made for those, uh, for each of those individuals. I think we, we will see this kind of, um, more of these uh, products in the market in the future. As I mentioned earlier, uh, 3D food printing is one of the technology which can be applied here. You can tailor made the ingredients that will be put into the uh, printer, the 3D food printer, and then print out the food that contains whatever you want it to be in that product. And uh, in the future, 3D food printer will even become a household appliance because they have been uh, uh, tested. The, the household food, uh, 3D food printer has already been tested in some of the countries like uh, in Europe and in the US and it may become available in the, in the market. You can just go to the electrical supply store and buy a 3D food printer for your household as, as like you go and buy a, a microwave oven or even a, a TV in the future. Okay, so I think uh, that is what I want to share with you in terms of uh, innovation and modernization that we may see in the near future related to food product, in, uh, new form of food product or modified form of food product. Because food science and technology has evolved throughout the years to promote innovation that is necessary to make healthier food products. And the 
advancement that has been successful. Some of the technology that I have shared with you has helped uh, the industry to reformulate or modernize its food production and processing technology as well as we now we are seeing emerging knowledge leading to personalization of uh, people's diet and nutrition. And last but not least, uh, to achieve healthy eating, I think consumer education will continue to play a very important role uh, in order to help the consumer make the right choice for whatever is available in the market. So with that, I thank you for your attention. Now we have arrived at the Q&A session. And I think the host has selected several questions for the speakers. Uh, dear participants, uh, now we will go to question and answer session. So please the, ho uh, the host to, to present the question if you have already put on your uh, PowerPoint. Or question from um, Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, how much chicory root fiber can be taken in a day for autoimmune disease? Okay, so just now I showed a uh, study uh, in type 1 diabetic uh, children and type 1 diabetes is a autoimmune disorder. So this is one of the um, um, a preliminary or early study, okay, just uh, this one study. And in that study, the scientists, they use 8 grams per day of chicory root fibers. Yeah. Uh, so if you do have, if anyone you know has type 1 diabetes, please, this is just a, a, um, a information from a scientific studies. It's really interesting evidence is uh, not to overtake and not to replace the insulin, okay? This is interesting uh, information uh, that we done, uh, that was done in chicory root fibers. It's uh, pre preliminary results. So um, uh, we hope to see more studies in this area as well, so that maybe eventually um, in the future, we can see chicory root fibers being used alongside the type 1 diabetes. Oh, that, that's my dream, okay? Yeah, okay. so in that study, they use 8 grams. And another question I see that um, from um, right eating right admin, yeah, okay. Oh, Vicky, yeah. Vicky. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, uh, is there any side effects from chicken root fibers for our body? Okay, so chicken root fibers, they are natural fibers are uh, extracted from the chicory plant just using hot water alone. So if, let's say at home you have the chicory plant, you can fly it from Belgium, for example, it's grown in Belgium and South, uh, in South America. Let's say you can fly it to your home. Okay, you just have to wash it, cut it out into small pieces and put in the hot water and then you get chicory root fibers. So it's natural and there are no side effects. Uh, yeah. Um, and one of the, I won't say side effects, I'll say benefits. So the benefits of chicory root fibers is better digestive health. Um, a lot of us actually suffer from, you know, not so good um, digestive health, like constipation. So chicory root fibers are really good. Increase your good bacteria as well, and also have um, supporting your uh, good bacteria, and good bacteria is good for your overall health, like your inner defense system, uh, better um, uh, calcium absorption. So for me, I take chicory root fibers every day. Yeah, it also tastes really good. By the way, it tastes, um, it smells like um, cotton candy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, look at the next one. Um, Sumla Yusef, Yusef, how much chicory root fiber can be taken in a day for autoimmune disease? In the screen. Yeah, yeah okay, so that one I really answered. Um, another yeah, question answered was, it. Regarding chicory root fibers, do you think it is of the same effect to different ethnic population at different age? Um, yes. So uh, our study showed that no matter what the, the person's age is, baby, child, or adult, or, or whatever the, the race is, maybe uh, European or maybe Asian, we still have this uh, selective increase of bifidobacteria. So we see a shift in the good gut microbes. Okay. Um, uh, and the other question comes from, uh, uh, from Simran. Do people with type 2 diabetes, are they allowed to consume a chicory roots? 
yes, of course, it's actually good for everyone, no matter what um, uh, age, also what, whatever health status. Actually, chicory root fibers are also used in infant formula and also used in adult uh, products. Um, I think, okay, so next time you go to the supermarket, okay, you're going to look out for the products, okay? I'm not familiar with all the country's products, but uh, chicory root fibers are also found in, uh, in Singapore products, for example, our breads and also our drinks as well. Um, Okay, then no. another one is... Uh, oh, flatulence, flatulence. Oh, flatulence. Okay, so for this kind of um, uh, gut, uh, okay, for flatulence, um, it also depends on the individual. For me, I take chicory root fibers every day. I'm okay. Uh, and actually, flatulence is very normal. Okay, it's a bit embarrassing, but it's very normal. Okay, it's nothing um, uh, harmful about that, just a bit embarrassing only. So for some people, maybe they have a bit more flatulence, for some people, not so much. Okay, so for, okay, may I share about myself? I take chicory root fibers every day. I don't have issue with flatulence. <laughs> okay, um, and then the other question is, uh, should we drink uh, water only or water. eat the root? Um, Okay, so this uh, ingredient, um, it's, um, uh, we take it out from the chicory root. Uh, so it's a chicory root fiber, it's a, in a powder form. So we can put it, okay, let's say you have the ingredient itself, you can actually put it uh, in water. For me, I add it to my oats and milk. And for food manufacturers, they add it to the powdered drinks so that they take out the powder, the milk powder to get the chicken root fibers and then put it in water. Or they also put it in other foods, for example, in uh, gummies like sweets and also in uh, yogurts, in dairy products, in ice cream. It can be used to replace fat. Yeah, so it tastes really good and in so many applications in uh, normal food that we eat and also in special medical nutrition food. So it's used uh, all over um, all types of products for all kinds of people. Okay, um, another question is from Nia. What is the minimum dose of inulin to have beneficial effects on gut microbes and glycemic response? Okay, so if you want like more good gut microbes, based on our human studies, it's five grams per day. Okay, per day, not per intake. So if just five grams per day of chicory root fibers, you get selective increase in this good bacteria called bifidobacteria. In terms of glycemic response or better blood sugar levels, our study shows that uh, if, let's say you're from the food industry, you want to replace sugars, just 20%, just take out 20% of sugars and then put, um, put back uh, chicory root fibers, you really get a lower blood glucose response. And by the way, chicory root fibers, if you eat it on its own, it does not increase your blood sugar levels at all because our enzymes in our body cannot break it down. So it doesn't cause any uh, rise in blood sugar levels. Okay, but if we are a cow, okay, we can break down chicory root fibers. But if you're not a cow, okay? So the chicory root fibers are not digestible in our small intestine enzymes. So they go to the large intestine. And that's where the large intestine is where the prebiotic effect is uh, happening, okay? And where the good gut microbes see their favorite nutrients, they say, wow, sadab, enak. Okay, then they, yeah. they ferment it. <laughs> 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 okay, and uh, let's see other questions. And the next question is: Kikori plant can be planted in tropical countries like Indonesia. Um, it's uh, it's planted in like um South uh, America and also in Belgium. So these countries are a bit cooler. Uh, Indonesia is a bit warm. So if there's aircon, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> So um, the climate-wise, it is not suitable. Otherwise, uh, I think we also have a chicory uh, plantation over here. So in terms of climate-wise, they need something a bit more cold, okay? Uh, more aircon temperature. <laughs> okay, so another yes. question is... And for Mita, uh, Mita no Sari. Increased pre bifida bacteria strain. Yes, so yeah. prebiotics can... Um, uh, chicory root fibers, uh, based on our results, it shows bifida bacteria uh, is selectively increased, lactobacillus as well, and also n uh, Why do I always say bifidobacteria? Uh, because bifidobacteria is the most famous uh, my, uh, good gut microbes among all the good gut microbes. It's the most well studied. So that's why I talk about the most famous one, okay? The most famous celebrity. Yeah. Okay. okay. But it's yeah. also for lactobacillus strain, yes? Ah, uh, yes, yes, okay. yeah. How are the benefits of prebiotics addition? As we know, the benefits. I think I've already. Uh, okay, so yeah. how are the how how are they get the uh, benefits from prebiotic addition? So this this uh, bacteria get benefit from from the addition of uh, prebiotics. Oh, so uh, like I symbiotics. Already, uh, the, uh, so yeah, the the increase in uh, the growth of 
yeah. ego ya yeah. yeah. correct um, you, you already presented about the uh, so epithelial cell of the gut about the leaky gut like the membrane okay so how okay, the so for, how the prebiotic make a good to, to the good bacteria this is the, the question oh okay So for this um, pre-bowed chicken reboot fibers, they're the favorite, favorite food of the good gut microbes. So when they are, <clears throat> when a good gut microbe see them in a large intestine, because um, chicken reboot fibers are not digestible in a small intestine, so the, the good gut microbes, they can break down the beta bonds in chicken reboot fibers. They can ferment it. So when they ferment it, Um, uh, the good gut microbes increase in numbers. There's more good gut microbes. And these good gut microbes also produce things like metabolize short-chain fatty acids. And short-chain fatty acids help to nourish and thicken our gut barrier. So it's nice, fat, and juicy, okay, rather than skinny. So if you want fat. Okay, um, I think there are other questions. Uh, there are many kinds of, of prebiotics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of questions. Yes. Which are the best one to That's add? Best okay. Add. This is uh, interesting. Yeah, so in It's terms of prebiotics, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. scientifically proven ones are the best. So it's chicory root fibers and gauze, okay? So these two are scientifically proven. Everything else is um, candidates. So they need more science to prove the benefits. And um, uh, another one what, would be... What is the substance in the chicory uh, fiber? Is this inulin, pos, or what? what? Oh, what, what okay, so chicory root fiber... Uh, chicken root fiber is a general umbrella term for oligofructose, which is a short oh. chain chicken root fibers, and inulin, a long chain uh, chicken root fiber. Oh, okay. So um, both are prebiotics. So what's the difference? Okay, so if you are looking for uh, sugar replacement, go for oligofructose, the shorter chain. It tastes a little bit sweet. But if you want to go for fat replacement, wow, a creamy mouthfeel. So, so and the f- it is not a single, a single substance, yeah? Um, it's a it's a single substance, just that the um, the fiber sometimes is long chain and shorter chain. So we oh. um, the shorter chain ones are a bit sweeter, so we can use for sugar replacement for the food companies. They want to reduce sugar, right? So we can use the shorter chain oligofructose. If you want to replace the fat, let's say in your ice cream, in yogurt, ah, then you use inulin. Or even in cheese spreads, you can use inulin to replace the fat, so that you have a fiber, you have prebiotic increase. It's digestive health, and you don't have the fat. Plus, you get this very nice mouthfeel. Okay, can you explain? Um, can you explain what type of prebiotic you gave them? Ah, uh, okay. So all these prebiotics I was talking about is about prebiotic chicory root fibers, and it's eaten at uh, any time of the day. I mean, it's a safe. Um, it's safe. It's a fiber. It's food. Yeah. So how to standardize? How do we standardize chicory root fiber as prebiotics for its functional properties? Um, I'm not too sure what that means. Uh, standardize as in how to test that is present. Okay, so anyway, there are um, uh, to test whether there's uh, this product contains chicory root fibers. For example, let's say your food company, you want to say, oh, um, I added chicory root fibers to my food. Um, whether okay, can I test whether it's present? You send it for fructan analysis. Okay. And then another question would be, um, how to consume chicken root fibers because it breaks down quickly by bacteria. It causes belly bloating or abdominal pain. Okay, so how can we consume chicken root fibers? Any way you like. If you like it with your coffee, okay, add to your coffee. If you like it in your yogurt or your breakfast, you can also add it there. For me, I add it to my breakfast. But if you want to take it as like um, at other times of the day, it's, it's fine as well. It's really up to you how you want to eat it. Um, so it the is, test uh, is blend, yeah? The test is blend. So no test for, for this uh, fiber? Uh, to test the presence of the fiber is no, a no, fructan no, analysis. No, uh, no test. It is blend, blend. Not oh, the sweet. blend? Some, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, for the inulin, the longer chain is uh, blend. Uh, not much taste. But okay, the shorter no taste, uh, no. chain, uh, chicken root fibers, oligofructose, is a bit sweet. Then when you smell it, it smells like cotton candy. Yeah, so it's very nice. Uh, actually, you add to things like um, your, your dairy uh, foods, your milk, or maybe your soy milk, actually enhance the taste. So I add But to my the milk. the calorie and... content is zero. How about the calorie content? Oh, okay, the yeah. calorie content is uh, 1.5 grams, uh, 1.5 calories per gram. Actually, okay, chicken root fibers does not give us calories. How come oh. I say calories? 
You see, when the microbes um, uh, ferment this uh, chicory root fibers, it gives out energy, and this calories is absorbed into our um, uh, colonal sites, our large intestine cells. So that's why there's calories. Okay. Um, and in terms of, um, oh yes, yes, it's also used in infant formula for more than 20 years already. Yeah. Okay, and um, it's, um, it's, it's not broken down by our body's enzymes, it's broken down by, uh, it's hyd um, it is fermented by the gut microbes. So in terms of tolerance, I, um, like uh, Embrine, you mentioned about bloating and abdominal pain, this is very individual. Actually, um, if you take, of course, you take a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, fiber-rich foods. Let's say you take 10 fruits oh, okay, one, okay. one time, of course, you get belly bloating. Okay. So, but if you take normal right. amounts, like so, one fruit or whatever, it's actually okay. Uh, let to the second question to Professor Dr. Anadi Niti Tamyong. Uh, some researchers saw that, some research, I think, yeah, some research saw that an artificial sweetness disturbed the growth of gut microbiota. Could you share your opinion about it, please, Professor Anadi? Yes, I think uh, it depends on the type of the chemicals. And uh, to date, there are limited research that give, give uh, that result. So in general, we are still uh, okay on using uh, artificial sweeteners. And again, I must mention that it depends on which type uh, which compounds that you you are talking about? Uh, in, in general, we still consider it safe. I mean, if you look, you if you are using those that are um, allowed uh, by the regulators in oh. at the amount that uh, they are allowed as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the next question, please, the host. Uh, still for Dr. Anad, Professor Anadi, how the three-dimension food printer work? <laughs> Do we have put the food ingredient inside the machine? Yes, the input would be, you know, the, the ingredients or the food mixture. In, it, it will come in the kind of like the puree-like form as a feed and it will pass through the printer and it will be put on to the, uh, the platform layer by layer to form a 3D tape food product. So uh, the ingredient used must be the food, food, in, food itself, food, I mean food raw materials or food grade uh, ingredients and um, so that, you know, it will be edible and safe. Thank you. Thank you. And the next, you still have? You still have the question or from, okay. Okay. Uh, Participant, I, I know that uh, you have still have uh, many questions yeah, because the uh, topic is very interesting. So, uh, due to the time, I cannot read open the question. So. I think I give the remaining question to the speaker and let them to answer later. As the moderator and the ICE One committee, again, I would like to say thank you to the Honorable Professor Dr. Singh, Dr. Uh, Professor Anadi for a very valuable talk uh, this afternoon. All of you have provided us with new insight regarding immunity and food. We learned a lot from your presentation and hope we can meet again at other scientific events in the future. Thank you to all participants for your active participation in this plenary. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today's webinar has come to an end.
Thank you for your participation and excitement throughout the webinar.